Hey guys, this is a uh, little impromptu post interview breakdown featuring Dustin. Uh, we just spoke to Tony Rinaldo from Kinetic Climbing and uh, Marco Fiore from Windsor Rock Gym about them operating gradeless gyms. And uh, as I mentioned in the interview, I was such a huge fan of it when I got to visit Windsor Rock Gym. Um, and I know Dustin enjoys something about going down there, but I just want to talk a little bit more between us about our thoughts after getting to talk to these guys about their opinions and stuff. Um, I guess, first thing I want to start with is like, as much as the idea of a gradeless gym is almost like a, a new idea, right? Like it's kind of a thing that not really many people do. Something that came out of that interview is Marco and Tony still have like very old school ideals, right? Like they care a lot about relating their experience to outdoor climbing, even though they're in markets where there's very little of that nearby. Um, as, as much as Tony's been involved in the indoor like root setting and hold shaping industry for like decades, um, it seemed like in a couple spots, it doesn't sound like he's that psyched personally about like the modern innovations and in root setting. Like he, he's, he still like really relates this stuff to outdoor climbing. Um, and so I thought that was an interesting contrast because, you know, this is something that I consider a new school idea. I, I look at this in the same way that I look at, you know, Japanese or Korean backfill and that it's ultimately an old idea, but it is new again because it has this, uh, this kind of relevance that, what am I trying to say? It's relevant again because <laughs> of what came before immediately before it, which was taping everything, separate routes, all this kind of stuff. It's kind of a reaction again to what was a reaction uh, in the first place. So this is a very long-winded question, but th that was kind of <laughs> just a surprise to me. Do you think that because they have such a unique and old school and very small gym mentality like that's the other thing is they they do operate like small gyms right is it mm. is it actually irrelevant is it necessary that you have to be running a small gym and have a different set of ideals for this to work because i don't want that to be true I, I i don't want that to be true either i do want to touch on a couple of points that you you brought up during that whole long-winded section yeah sorry that was uh, a terrible so intro but <laughs> no 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 it's fine uh, we'll just use it as a discussion point. The first thing I want to talk about, though, is the reference to backfill because, like, I grew up in a gym that had seven, eight, uh, like nine or ten backfills, and like now, if you open a gym with like with with just the idea that like nine or ten backfills is going to do it, like I don't I don't think it would work. Like I I think it's it's really re relevant to have one backfill. Uh, after one. You, like I can't see there being a, a a point of having more than more than multiple backfills because like even thinking about it as a customer like do I really want to go to a gym pay for a day pass and then do my job I don't think I do like, <laughs> yeah I, but you're really you're see but you're a root setter though right like everybody else that's a climber their dream in their head is like oh one day I want to be a root setter so maybe that's something better like I I get what you're saying is that they can't just walk up to the wall and start climbing they have to put some thought into it but you're definitely got a different lens than they do because they'd be the most <laughs> psyched to root set I I don't know like I I don't know could you really open a gym now with like just backfills I don't I don't think you I could, wouldn't but I, I, I wouldn't suggest that like I think I think that could be a very <laughs> unique small training gym but I don't feel like I I don't think that's the same as as just going gradeless because again like they're distinct routes they are they're setting attractive routes they're modern holds like everything about it is a modern experience as much as possible except they just don't tell you how hard it is um yeah and I I, I think that's really super interesting and I I, I really do want that to be the case because I think it then um, makes the conversation less about like the grade or or you know, the opinion of the setter or the climber or anybody like it takes that entire um, conversation out because they've just removed the language for that conversation. And I really like the idea of going gradeless. I don't know. I like it's hard to walk that fine line of like um of grades being uh, a deterrent and people giving numbers power versus like them being a guideline for, uh, oh, this boulder, I can do this boulder because it's this grade. Like, I think that um, Tony and Marco are answering that question by being in the gym and being like, you can try this boulder because I know how hard you climb and you'll really like this boulder. This, But if you, if you don't have that person, if you don't have, and just some gym size, like, how would you have one person doing that for all of Rockheads? I mean, CU is like definitely giving it his best, but like. 
Well, that was, that was kind of the like the the interesting thing is is that you know it's been so long since I've been a new climber that I I can't really like honestly say that I can relate to that person anymore, right? Like when I first went climbing, it was with a friend who he was also like literally brand new. My first visit was his second visit and he just showed me like, oh yeah, I did this climb last time. And so that was kind of how I, I learned where to climb. Everything was marked with grades, but I didn't know what the difference between a zero and a one and a two was. So I was just kind of following his suggestions. But um, I don't know what my experience would have been like if I had just been kind of thrown in and had to fend for myself. All I know is that as the climber I am today, which is somebody that like I still enjoy climbing, but I don't seek it out. I don't plan my week around climbing sessions. I absolutely do not train and I don't give a fuck about climbing trips. Um, but <laughs> if if I've got nothing else going on and there's a new gym nearby, I love grabbing my shoes and going and just like touching everything, try all the problems and when I started climbing shortly after one of the instructors at the gym told me, you know, don't, don't just keep trying the boulders, try the roots as well, even though I was on my own. And what he was saying was do the first three moves of every climb. And so I got it in my head back when I was only climbing V ones and V twos, try the starts of everything, right? Like get on every single boulder and see how far you can get. Do the same thing with uh, with your with the top rope climbs and the lead climbs. And, and that was really interesting because as a V0 or V1 climber, I could still do the first couple moves of like a 511 or like a 512. And so there was something interesting about that. And that's not a very hard philosophy to give to people to say, you know, just because you can't get to the top, it doesn't mean you can't have success on the bottom. Right. Um, and so I, a part of me is torn in that. I think the values of, of this kind of gradeless system are actually really easy to explain to people. But there is the other part of me that is just like, how am I making sure that these first timers who don't feel comfortable, who might not feel safe, all this kind of stuff, how can I make sure that they have a good experience in my environment? And the one thing I can't balance out is that my environment, like Joe Rockhead's, your environment hub, these can become super busy gyms, like full of people. And that's when most new people show up. The mats are crowded with people lining up for climbs. You're surrounded with tons of people that are also strong. And even if all these people are super nice, which all of them are, is it ever going to feel the same as a Windsor Rock Gym where it's like, you know, 10, 15 other people compared to like 200, 300? Well, and, and that experience is is what is uh, really at the heart of that, right? Is like if you're a new climber and there's a bunch of like uh, like bros in their tank tops all thrown down, maybe there's like some <laughs> grunting. Are you really are you really going to be that person that's like I just want to try this boulder over here? <laughs> yeah. Like that's a super super intimidating arena that you just put in front of this person that is trying to like just. Uh, learn about our sport and like mm. that's it that's a really intimidating experience for that person yeah i i don't but, know i don't know if they work the same way based on the size of the gym it is the it is like the biggest question is like is the social dynamic is the the dynamic of just the space that you're climbing in does it make yeah. it possible to to climb like that i don't know so here's another thing that i i, I wanted to put it there do you go gradeless on rope climbs? <laughs> I actually had that, that if we if these guys like gave really short answers, I actually had that as one of the questions at the very end. Um, yeah, let's let's talk about that. What's the okay? What's let's talk about the difference because it basically, in my opinion, comes down to safety when you're when you're dealing with rope climbs. <laughs> like top rope, just... not so much. Top rope actually doesn't worry that much. But I I want people to have an idea of what they're okay. So. Well, let's just say this with top rope, it's not so bad, right? Like you okay. can get on a climb. And if, if the values of a boulder are like flow and not having a significant crux and stuff like that, you can, I think a hundred percent get away with it on top rope climbs. When you get to lead climbs, th the only difference becomes like clipping and the root setting just has to be very good and consistent <laughs> and acknowledge the safety part of like, yeah, somebody might have reached the first clip and they're way out of their element at first draw, <laughs> right? Like they might be clinging on for dear life just barely managed to get there and like now they have to clip and so that's the one part that sketches me out a bit is would you just have to make sure you have a lifesaver of a jug at every single or at least the first couple draws because 
that's the one thing I worry about is somebody just like chicken wing and like crazy full body shakes, <laughs> like two grades above their, above their, uh, above their like standard climb. But what do you think? I, I don't know, man. Cause like, I also think that, um, lead climbers are a little bit like, what am I trying to say? That's not going to be an opinion that I get sh- like I get flamed for later. Um, grades are important I, outside. Let's just start with that. Like you, you yeah. kind of like when you like, you might choose a climb because you arrive at the crag and you're like, wow, that's a beautiful line. I want to climb that. But you're going to look at the fucking guidebook, unless you're like the world's craziest super crusher. You're going to well, check to see how hard it is before you get on it. That's the thing is like you, you like when I'm rolling into a new crag, I've got the guidebook out and I'm looking at grades. I'm like mm-hmm. looking at I've got like a boulders or roots that I've started that I'm like, I want to try this. Mm-hmm. Now, so, most, most people it, don't do that because they're like, I want to find the easiest 514 and send that, <laughs> right? Like they're looking for a broad range of like, what what's in my arena? What do I think is that a difficulty that I could have fun and be safe and not annoy my belayer by like, you know, hang dog for an hour kind of thing. So it, it is yeah. like an approximation, right? Which is the same thing people do in a gym. Well, yeah. And I just, I think that like, it also depends on the climber you are. Like if you're chasing grades, you're chasing grades. And if grades don't matter to you, I don't, then it doesn't really matter. You're looking for an experience. But like, I, I feel like, I feel like root grades indoors need to be there. <laughs> like there's, there's something in the back of my brain that's just as a root sitter, like, yeah, you need those. Like you, you absolutely can't get away with those. Bouldering, I don't think it's that hard because like, I, I don't know. Bouldering is also already like a social kind of interaction. You have, um, you have like the group of people. And just on a side note, I think that like without the grades, I think it makes the the gym less clicky. I think that's like a very valid thing. But I have like, could you could you do that on a rope? I don't think you could. I don't. I don't think the grades would have much social dynamic and how the ropes work aside from maybe like you've got the guy that shows up and their plan is like i'm here to train so everybody get the fuck out of the way kind of thing and they might have a bunch of like chuffers like trying their route um even though it's like way out of their league so i don't think it's as big an effect on ropes but um yeah well well, like let me let like let's say let's make a a very drastic hypothetical because you're not much of a top roper (laughs) (laughs) but like let's say you're going in for like your weekly top rope session or whatever with your like you know just with a friend or something and i know this is a is a stretch but um let's say there's no grades on the top ropes like as an average, even though you're a root setter that you, you like, if you look at a climb, I know that you know what every single hold feels like. Uh, and so like, we're both different beasts in that regard, at least, because there's basically no questions when we look at a route, we know exactly what the holds will feel like. You probably can tell what every single move is going to be. That's a huge deficiency for me as I cannot sequence, like I can, <laughs> I, I can sequence. Okay. But I have a really hard time of superimposing my body onto a wall and figuring out what it might feel like. Um, but for the most part, there's not that many questions for us, but still, I don't think it would affect me that much. Like you take a walker, like if I walk into a gym right now, I walk around, I look at what the grades are. I see what's out there. So I see, okay, this looks like the kind of grade that I would warm up on. This looks like the kind of grade that I would, uh, do a hard workout on. I'm looking at the aesthetic as well. Like what looks really fun, what doesn't. And if you just remove the grades from that, I'm going to take a loop. I'm going to be like, oh yeah, that purple one looks really easy and it looks really attractive. That one over there, oh, the holds are pretty small, but it's a great looking line. So maybe I'll save that to a bit later. Like in terms of your process, it's still basically the same thing. You just have to be open to like, sometimes you're going to hop on a climb and it's, it's going to be harder than you thought. And you might have to come down. Whereas that probably happens a bit less with the current system. Um, Cause as we mentioned, it can say it's ex- exactly the grade you want and that it's not actually. Um, but yeah, I don't think it would be that different an experience aside from just like there's an extra faffing around of if you want to try something on ropes, it's not as easy as walking to the wall, trying it and then walking back off. You got to tie in, you got to get your partner. You, you often have to wait in line for a climb if you're at a busy gym. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I think like I'm thinking about all the... Um the rope gyms that I know and like the rope gyms, like, uh, like for us, we, uh, we grade our roots like a, a week late or maybe two after there's like some member consensus, um, which I think is interesting because it gives membership kind of like ownership over the setting program in a, a certain way. Like they get a voice. 
Um, okay. When, wait, uh, when somebody walks up to a new route in your, uh, in your gym, what, what information do they have about how hard it is? Nothing, nothing at all. Like if it's, if it's just, even if it's set, like a lead route kind of thing, like, a, like with, with like burly yeah. clips up a steep face and stuff, you just give them nothing. Yeah. And like, is anybody no... like, have you, <laughs> sorry, we're getting into the weeds here. Fortunately, I don't think you, you, uh, you anyway, <laughs> I like, do you I... think there's ever been like a, a serious problem that was the fault of that? No, I, I think like I I think it's fine, and I know I'm completely changing my mind on this. But the, the more that I like, the more that I'm talking myself through it, I'm like, maybe grades, like maybe that's the the starting place. Maybe like maybe the root grades don't need to be there, and the boulders are the problem. Like I, it could be a real thing. I think that there's, um, yeah, there's. I, it could just be that boulders are the problem and need validation. I know someone's going to kill me for saying that, but like, I like, uh, I, I like I, throughout the entire vein of that interview we just did, there was so much disdain, first of all, to like Toronto climbers. And then the other guys piled on. I was like, yeah, fuck big city climbers. And then, <laughs> and then both of them like owning and basically they like run the gym themselves, right? Like they're, they're at the front desks and it like kind of felt like I was being talked down to as a manager. I'm like, okay, yeah, keep talking. What, uh, what do you, what do you want to say about us middle management? But uh, yeah. Okay. So like, um, talking about the idea of not grading stuff for a small window and then putting a grade on it. That's super common, um, in roots. Yeah, and that's boulders. A, like, um, something within like the, um, the like alley up family of gyms. I can't remember if you might know the they have a thing called progression sessions and I can't remember mm -hmm. if it started on the West coast or the East coast. Um, I think uh, it was either Boulder house or seven bays. I can't remember. Um, but for those that aren't familiar, it's basically a method where, you know, they, uh, for their weekly reset of a particular, whether it's a boulder wall or the entire wall, they set their regular stuff, but they don't grade anything. And you have, I think it's a week where you can climb those boulders with no difficulty mentioned on any of it. And then after that, they put up the grades and they'll stay up for a few weeks or whatever with those grades marked. And it's, it's a, it's a big thing because they do it as a competition. So in the week that it's ungraded, you're just trying to climb as many of them as you can. Uh, and you don't know how hard they are. And I think the values are flat. So you're just trying to climb the largest number of climbs, uh, in your, in your week or whatever. And I think what I was always hearing was that like, uh, first of all, people are always very interested to hear what they climbed, right? They like want to know, was that, is that a blue tape? Like, is that a purple tape? Did I just do my first red and I didn't know it? Um, and so there's a lot of excitement to come in once things have been graded to like learn uh, what, uh, what it was they climbed. Um, and then from the root setting perspective is some like sometimes it sounded like, and I wasn't involved in the root setting uh, or even the running of any of these events, but apparently sometimes you could take the angle of like, okay, we're going to set these problems to our typical framework. So we are going to know which ones are blue difficulty, which ones are purple, and then we'll share them. And sometimes you take the angle of, we're just going to set some fucking problems, try and do an approximate grade distribution. And we're going to basically put the difficulty on it based on who climbed what. So we're like, okay, that guy's a purple tape climber. So we're going to oh, use him as the gauge for what's purple and what's not. But anyway, the, the long story short of this is like, there are lots of gyms that are doing the, the concept of a gradeless um, gym or at least gradeless boulders or roots on just a smaller time scale. And it's not stopping people from climbing. Like it may stop a couple people here and there. And so the question is really just like, what if everything was like that? You know, as the new climber, could you come into a gym with a totally ungraded wall? Those are the people I think about the most. Cause like, if you've been climbing for a bit, you're not going to be that intimidated to just put your hands on a start hold, take a measure of like, does this feel about right? Yeah, I'll try a move or two. Like that's not going to scare you, but it is the first people that come in. Um, and that, that's the, the, the one last big question for me, because every gym owner doesn't want to turn away new people. As much as we want to say we're like all about our members, all that kind of stuff, our daily income is entirely based on school groups, parties, first time visitors, people buying day passes. We need them to have a good experience just to, you know, pay for the daily cash, but also to replace the members that are leaving. So that's that's right. my one sticking point is is the starting experience. And yeah. Yeah, like I I I, I stand by what I said. I think like, it's important that like they have um, Marco and and Tony to like walk them through this and and bridge the the gap at sort of um, and just create that experience. But I go back to thinking about like you're you're new to climbing. You're say you're not physically the, the fittest person, but you still want to try this sport. 
and there's a bunch of bros doing hard moves with like and like they're not physically blocking you but that's still an intimidating environment to enter and i i love climbing because like we all we share the same arena like that's a really cool aspect of climbing to me but it it's still an intimidation factor and still but that, like, that factor be- still exists like with graded roots though the idea of like you're in a new environment and there's a lot of people that are intimidating like that's true for climbing no matter what and hopefully you've got a decent like set of members or whatever that are there but i don't think that part changes i think the part that that's like a little bit scarier is the like where do i start right like it's is off the bat i want to i want a new climber to feel like hey these are places where you're probably going to be able to like get your like get your footing place where you can probably get some moves up on this thing and actually make some progress rather than having to like how i guess what i'm saying is if you gave somebody no information about any of the climbs in your gym no suggestions or anything how many climbs would they have to try and feel shit on before they just left right like there there is an element of you have to be giving these people like an idea i always thought was just like give people an approximate circuit so when you do the tour whether it is marking five particular climbs with the little star or you know some indication of like this is a great beginner climb or just having a list posted at the desk saying like you know the red holds on the back 45 or green holds on the overhang or whatever something where you can just give somebody a little guide to get them their first couple steps which i don't think is that difficult to implement um yeah but i i I think so for me i think that like the important part about a new climber's experience is that feeling of getting to the top because that's like realistically in my mind that's what we're selling but i and we sell this idea of like um uh like you try something you work on something you get to the top you feel accomplished and then you go find something else i draw a lot of parallels between like skateboarding and climbing because like skateboarding is the same thing you just like you try to learn this trick you eat shit a ton and then you you finally stick it and you go on to the next trick and that's like that basically if you take out skateboarding and just replace it with bouldering that's the same thing Mm -hmm. you you work on a boulder you send it you feel accomplished and then you move on to the next boulder and if like i i just feel like there has to be some way for a new climber brand new to the sport same example uh physically not the fittest but their friends drag them out they're excited uh if they don't like they need to get that feeling of getting to the top because that's the thing that like gets you hooked i think i i'm probably well here's here's the other question is is like kind of are we selling like fast food when we're just built? Like we mentioned a gym by name after the interview and I won't mention it here, but like, and this is not to talk anything about the root setting quality, but if you just like make all the climbs in your gym much easier than they're supposed to be and grade them as whatever, like it's, it's, you know, actually a V1 outside, but we're going to call it a V5. Like you might make some people feel good and you'll make climbers from out of town feel good, I guess. But like, isn't that just like selling like shitty food to people? It tastes good, but it's like, it's not, there's no, um, are we just servicing? There's no virtue to it. Like, because one thing about like cool things like skateboarding is, yeah, you're, there's no training wheels for skateboards. There's no harness for skateboards. If you want to learn how to do whatever, I I am so out of my element talking about skateboarding right now. (laughs) But if you, if you want to land like any skate trick, there, there's no easy way to do it. You just have to do it over and over and over again. And that's a pretty good barrier to shitty people just deciding to say they're part of your sport. So the way we do things, is that just a way to like make people happy and have a good time without actually trying to foster the people that are really invested in it? Because that's one theme that came up with Tony and Marco was like, we're growing people is what they, is what they really believe in is like, we're making stronger climbers than your gyms are, whether or not there's proof of that. I don't know, but that's, that seems to be an argument that they have. And we know that that happens in our gyms too, but are we giving people too much comfort in like, in these minor little increments of like, Oh, congratulations, you climbed a V4. And now you just like, (laughs) you're proud of that forever. Whereas if we switch to this system, they would always be setting their eyes on the next problem. Well, so I'll, I'll, I'll answer with a, another question <laughs> uh, because like, I didn't want to ask this question while we're in the call. Cause okay. I was like, there was a red flag for me where I was like, this could cause just the worst amount of shit. All right. But uh, like both Tony and Marco 
made it very clear that they they want people like they want their climbers to climb outdoors. Mm-hmm. How many people is that realistically in Toronto? Like I, when I think of all of my membership, I'm trying to like do math on like how many actually climb outside versus like some people want nothing to do with climbing outside ever. Like, do you, like you yourself have admitted that you're like, nah, I'm not, I, I don't want to go outside. I'm just happy to be a gym climber. Mm-hmm. And there's some, like there's, there's a lot of people that indoor rock climbing is an end unto itself. There's no, uh, I want to get better. So I go to competitions. I want to get better. So I go outside on road trips. There's just like people that are like, I work in the city. Uh, unfortunately I live outside of the city. So instead of sitting in traffic for two and a half hours, I'm going to go to the gym and I don't like lifting weights. So I'm going to go to the rock climbing gym and then I'm going to drive home. Like how, how do we justify? I don't um, like, I don't think having grade lists, like it's totally cool. If these guys want to encourage people to climb outside, that's like, I got nothing wrong with that prop. Like if they're lucky, maybe half of them will go outside over time like it really depends on how they you know foster things you mentioned marco like literally driving members out to the outdoors and there are some gyms that do excursions and that's all sick and stuff but i think just the idea of like ultimately what we really want is we want people to climb regardless of what type of climbing that is for a really long time um and we want them to do it in a healthy way so they don't get you know hurt beyond reason and i don't think that goal is really changed um uh like, I don't think, I don't think the grade list setting really affects that. I think the, the one thing that's honest is, is it does suck if you climb a V5 indoors and then you go outside and you are absolutely eating shit on like grades lower than that. It is kind of ridiculous and, and kind of unnecessary. And I'm not sure if we've really ever actually, if there's any actual proof of the virtue of setting like easy routes for the grade. I don't know if that's if that's honest, like it might be true for, for some people, but does it have more negatives than, than positives? And I honestly don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't know either because like when I was competing on world cups and, and I lived with Eric Sethna and we trained at one gym specifically, uh, and I won't name gyms. I'll just say that one it gym, I know tra- <laughs> no, one gym we trained at during the week was really hard and the grades were stiff and we knew it. And then, when things got bad and Eric and I were both like mentally worn down from training, there would be one of us would say, let's go to this other gym because their grades are soft and we're going to feel like rock climbing <laughs> gods for a day. And that like specifically that example got me, th- me and Eric through some really harsh training programs that like when you're feeling really unmotivated, you just go and know that you're lying to yourself. So Maybe there is something to be said about that. I mean, like if you always have a good day in one gym and have horrible days in another gym, I personally want to go to the gym that I always have good days in. Whether those days, like whether I'm being lied to or not. Um, yeah. So like maybe I feel like there's more positives than there are negatives, but that's my personal and professional opinion. Um, the number of times that I'll hear someone say like complain about the softness of a grade versus the stiffness of a grade uh, I can tell you that it's always on the stiffness. No one ever complains about doing their first V whatever. Like nobody complains. The only people that complain about that are the people that are far beyond that difficulty. Like that's that's really it. Yeah. Yeah. But then like that that person, that person walks away from that day being like, I did my first green tag or whatever. Like I did my first this. And they're like they feel like a boss and they're telling their friends and they're like making an Instagram post about it. And it's like that's part of uh, like something that needs to be considered with gradeless climbing is like how can we like it takes away a lot of validation i don't know i still sit on the fence about this i would love to be gradeless but i just feel like people sometimes like they need a progression they need those moments where they have like they top their first of this grade and they're like they're telling all their friends and then they're making that instagram post and they want to do it again on on video so that they can make the Instagram posts. Like I just, I feel like there's a lot of culture around that. I I can't deny that. That is super true. So, it, what that scares me is like if you had one gym, it, like Toronto, I think right now has within the city limits proper. I think it has eight gyms and it's about to be ten. I think. So, like if you imagine in the downtown cluster of gyms, if you had one gym that was entirely gradeless, I worry about those two things that you just mentioned. One is 
people not really feeling like they can get the Instagram validation, which unfortunately is reality for, you know, climbing is becoming more associated with words like wellness and all the shit that that brings for the most part. Um, but so That's aside from really feel, yeah, aside from the Instagram thing, but also just what you mentioned before about it, um, you want to climb at a gym that makes you feel good. And if what makes you feel good is sharing your successes um, beyond the people that witness it, then yeah, that can be hard. Cause if, if you're just like in it for a reputation, it's not like you can still celebrate in the moment with the people at your grade list gym. Like, fuck yeah, I got this climb. It's a big deal for me, but it's not, it's not something you can put on a resume. Right. Um, mm -hmm. but on, on like a gradient. So you and I both work for gyms that have like multiple setting, um, formats throughout the gym so i think we both have like a backfill that is maintained over a long period of time i think hub has one right you guys have a backfill that you keep up yeah, yeah our markham our markham location has an adjustable one yeah okay so we both have a backfill um we have lots of stuff that is like your typical climbing it's got a certain type of grading on it whether that's just a color or whether that's an actual noted grade and then we also have a circuit area which is more honest, honest to, to the, the circuit, circuit concept, concept where it's like four, four climbs, climbs of this color, color like purple, purple four, four climbs of pink, four climbs of white or whatever it is. Um, and, and each, each of those tape colors is an approximate grade range. range. So, so there's like the easy circuit of five problems, the hard circuit of five problems. And so along this gradient, like you go from the, the, uh, the backfill, which has literal number grades on it, whatever system it is, then you go to your, your main root setting, which is probably on some kind of color system. And then you go to your circuits, which are more vague. So you've got the spectrum there. You just haven't ended it with the, the like completely ungraded problem with no reference at all right and so so, so part, part of it is like why not just do that thing and this is actually this is actually i'm not sorry i was gonna go on a tangent not gonna we'll save for another episode gotta get gotta get those likes but like why why isn't it just an easy thing of saying okay let's let's go one step further on this on this gradient of root setting philosophies and just add you know one problem so a week or change your circuit just, wall every once in a while so that for a month your circuit wall has no grades on it or something oh my god that's so cool like that doesn't I like hurt that. anybody right like if you're already on a circuit no. wall where you know but if you like if you already offer all of those other things like you're right it's not a big step to and now i'm thinking about it man like now I'm like, where can I put one of these in my gym where it's just like a wall that isn't graded and we call it like, it's the ungraded wall. You can just go and climb there and you'll never know what the grades are over there. Mm -hmm. It's such an, a cool idea, but like, uh, you'd have to it see is how. Easy. Like it is just, you just have to decide what you're going to cut, right? Like that's, that's the decision that all of the people before us had to make is like, yeah, we used to do it this way, but now we're like at Climbers Rock back in the day, we have that huge like 45 wall in the front. It was the signature wall of this, of this gym of the bouldering section. And then one day we just decided like, okay, we're going to just make this a backfill wall and tons of people <laughs> complained about it. And honestly, for the first like maybe year, it probably was underutilized and not worth giving up that space but as we got better at setting backfill it became a really important thing and i think in the long term it was a good decision i think it became a really important training tool especially for like the legit national level world level athletes that are coming out of that gym it was really important for them to have and we just had to pick a wall um we were we were really bold about it and chose the most signature wall in the gym <laughs> but I think it was a good trade-off. So like, I think at some point you're just like, oh, we're going to change this and people will fucking deal with it and they'll be okay. Like they might complain or they might just ask like, wait, what's going on? But I think like straight up climbing is getting, if you climb a lot, climbing can get really stale really quick, especially if you've worked in climbing. Like you're just like every gym is just every other gym. Like I know, <laughs> I know the holds are going to be a bit different. Like the, the fucking like, Tech, like fatty long fats are going to be yellow at this place and red at the other place. Like that's as exciting as it gets. Um, it, it Just for me, I would love if somewhere in my neighborhood there would just be, and I think about it like Boulder's DuPont, just like a small format gym would be such a cool place to, to, to use that kind of style. I would love it if they tried something like that. Um, but I, I, I would love if there was a different, kind of paradigm of indoor climbing in our neighborhood. And I, I always push that with people I work for of like, 
you should probably start figuring out what your actual values are and who you want to be as a gym because more and more gyms are opening and at some point you have to differentiate yourself and explain like who you are right and some gyms can differentiate themselves just by having genuinely the best setters or genuinely the best setting turnover but at some point there's going to be a lot of middling gyms that have average walls they might be 10 years old or whatever, so they can't call themselves the big new thing anymore. What is it about your gym? Like, you can't just serve every customer. You can't just be like, yeah, we're good for these people and this people and those people and that. Like, everybody can have a good time. Like, who are you? And I, I would love something like this. That would be so exciting. I feel that's interesting because you're right. Like, every gym has to have an identity. And I think we're further away from it than we were before. Like, when it was just um, – oh, like, this is showing my age and climbing, but – um, when it was just the, the big three gyms in the GTA in their original locations, like you had climbers that that really identified with the gym that they're climbing at, I, I like that was a part of their climbing identity was like I climb at this gym or I climb at this gym. Back before the days um, of punch passes, right? Like that was that was yeah, that was the big yeah. thing that ruined it all. Is now everybody's got a fob <laughs> for every fucking gym. Yeah, well, and like and that just like that identity has been like diluted i think and now it's just like gyms just keep popping up you're saying that there's two more coming to the gta and i was like what what assuming they managed to open up after like covid like that's the the, probably the big thing like who knows but they've got the buildings at least and i'm sure honestly i'm sure there are more i'm talking about ones that are like actively under construction that i'm sure most people in the scene know about um but uh yeah so hopefully i'm sure they planned on opening well they both did plan on opening by the end of 2020 um hopefully now as soon as that's a reality Uh, yeah but yeah so like i i want to make it happen i'm not involved in the root setting at my gym um i try and keep that pretty compartmentalized because i know in the past i've tried to like overstep and get involved in the root setting stuff and it doesn't (laughs) always work that well um but it's it's something i'd love to to mess around with and like i think about our gym um is first of all things are going to change a lot from from covid so like some walls won't be set for a while so part of me thinks like okay on our backfill wall which would normally just be a huge wall just like covered and holds what if for the first couple months we just put up like five or ten problems on that wall and just don't grade them just for for a change it's like it's still a unique thing or take our circuit wall and say okay we're gonna start by setting it the same way we do in our heads right where we set five easy problems five mid problems and five hard problems, but we take away the tape colors. And over time, you just start blurring the lines, right? As the setting crew in the background, you stop like compartmentalizing the five, 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 and you just start saying, okay, we're gonna we're gonna turn this from these distinct tiers into more of just like a gradient range upwards. Um, I think those would be just really fun ideas and something that could, I yeah, I don't know. I, I want well, something like, new. I'm so desperate for something new right now. <laughs> Well, and also, I just think, it, like, again, I think it it really changes the conversation that root setters have when they don't have to have specific grades. I'm a very, like, uh, I, I very much like as little control as possible because I don't want, like, I, as a setter, don't want to be controlled. So I often just, like, make a list of all the grades and, and anybody can sign up for whatever they're setting. Um, that's just my process and my feel. I don't like assigning some like grades and stuff, but I wonder what that process looks like if we take out the grades. Like now I'm going to try it because I, w- I want to know, but like, what does it look like when I don't put grades down and just say like, okay, we have 22 boulders that we got to set. Best of luck. Let's figure it out. Cause I know in like the first couple of goes, the, the bell curve will be all wrong. And that's like, that's one of the things that I, um, I, th- I think is interesting about Tony's situation because he's saying like he can adapt it every every day and I'm sure he can but again that's a, a a process that's dependent on him same with Marco so what happens when you're looking for like career root setters that like I'm older now man like I like sometimes not being in the gym that's like yeah as much as I, there is something romantic about like always being at the gym and it's a small business like we know we're going towards professionalism in that hey you are a roof setter you deserve a day off a week kind of thing right like you can't be there all the time you have some days when you're working you shouldn't be root setting like there's all these all these things and and it's not just like this you know like everything is like super corporatized blah 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 
but like you you're managing setting for two separate locations that are not particularly close together you're managing no, large so crews right like they're it, it becomes hard to be as flexible in that regard that they mentioned um but yeah i like if like let's say let's say tomorrow you're going into work and your owners have said yeah we're going to take the circuit wall we're going to do 15 problems no grades at all how many people would you normally set that wall with like you and two other people three other people or yeah two uh, two other people so, yeah. so let's, like, let's say this is actually happening it's not a hypothetical even though obviously it is what what would you use to to line everybody up on like who is setting what would you start saying okay we're going to set for these grades or relate it to to the difficulty of of our red circuit like what what would you, what do you think you would start with as a starting point so my my gut tells me to go with like easy medium and hard because like that when I was back setting for the tour de block, that was like the easiest metric to communicate to other root setters. I know like Caleb and I have had this talk where Caleb says like V grades are a language that we use and I get that. Um, I think that it's easier to translate like it's easier to translate easy, medium, or hard because people have an understanding of that. But um, people also have like, how would you ever do that in Marco's gym? Like if, if, Tomorrow, Marco calls me up and he's like, yeah, I want to do a comp. Uh, I need you to run it for me. I go, I roll down to Windsor. I'm happy I'm because I'm going to Windsor. But then like the conversation with his staff are just like, you've got this new roots that are coming in. You don't have any language for V grades. You don't understand my color system. Like there's, it just, the language isn't there. So like that conversation becomes hard. I, like I personally think that I would go easy, medium, hard in your in your situation, uh, and say like we're gonna do five easy problems, five medium problems, five hard problems, and then you start talking about like your audience for each of those, like the person that like the group of members that you know climbs in this range, and you start start relating it to your your clientele because that's the only way. Like one, those are the that's your clientele. Those are the people that are are experiencing your product. So. It, I would have to like you'd have to start using your audience. You'd have to start uh, like just as a metric off the start. You use like easy, medium, hard, and then we start talking about who like who's the audience for these circuits, and then hopefully something translates to that. But then then again, I'm just like I'm piggybacking off of grades. Like even though they're not V grades or anything, I'm still piggybacking off of like my understanding of easy, medium, hard, and then my understanding of my clientele and audience. Mm -hmm. But I think like I think that brings an interesting point that like maybe the gray like maybe not going gradeless, but maybe you should like maybe gyms should be uh, making their grading systems based off of their clientele because that's that sounds like loosely what Marco and Tony are translating, except they're not using any language that we know of because they're just using oh that person should be able to do another climb so I'll put it up for them. They just communicate via sonar. It's like Eng the English <laughs> language doesn't doesn't do it justice. Yeah. Well, like we already do that. Like, right. Like you you every like if you opened up a gym tomorrow, you would start with a standard bell curve and you'd probably skew it slightly towards easier just in case. But then over the course of months, you would be adjusting that curve as you like get feedback from people. So that's not that different from what you're doing already. Um, but yeah, I don't. I don't know if we're ever going to get that different, though. Like I want I want. Uh, like I want no grades. Absolutely. Is that a reality? I'm not so sure. So you're saying Could like, you, are you saying you want it for yourself? Like as a climber, or as a root setter or like what's when you say you want it, what do you mean? Uh, I like, I do. I would like to translate my gyms into no grades. I don't think that's a reality that I could do, but I think it's an interesting possibility. I think the closest that we're ever going to get is like the vague circuit system that more gyms are moving towards and um, and maybe the blind grades, like progressions, or we did like um, uh, a bouldering league over the summer that was really successful uh, and you didn't know the grades until the next week. I think those kinds of ideas, Climbers Rock I know does something very similar with their regular sets and I think those are good fundamentals and transitions into uh, our circuit systems, but I don't think we'll ever be able to get rid of circuit systems. I don't. I think that, like, especially in the DTA, there needs to. There's validation. There is. There is guidance. Um, 
This feels a lot like the conversations we had like eight years ago. I was like, we're never going to be able to get rid of tape. Like we're just stuck with tape in every hole. And then as it turns out, just as an industry, we decided we don't care about colorblind climbers and just absolutely just switched over to, to monochromatic holds, which I mean, we learned as we went, right? Like we decided, oh, these like this red and this pink shouldn't be beside each other. Or some gyms just decided we don't use red holds anymore or yeah, the hold industry just is, like realized, oh fuck, these colors are really similar, so we're gonna we're gonna like alter them out. Pink is gonna get brighter, green is gonna get brighter, purple's gonna get darker. Like we we adjusted and and made this stuff kind of happen. And I feel like it's not it's really not that hard to make this switch, especially on a small scale. Like again, just like a part of your gym using it as a place to test a theory and see how people feel about it. Um, I don't think is that difficult. So I hope some people try it like there's there's so many gyms in toronto like a couple people can come dedicate on. a wall come on now <laughs> i think it's i think it's really interesting and like i said i'm i'm going through walls in my head to do it in the gym and see if it's like because it, it, my only i i guess it's not a fear but it, in thinking about it i i wonder like if that's too many options right like there's like uh, there's the circuit wall, and then there's your regular colored circuits uh, or regular grading or whatever, and then you add this like third. Uh, I, I wonder That's if it's a too fair much. point. That's what, like when we do our bolt orientations, we have to talk about like three different philosophies of marking right? roots, right? So you start out in the first area where it's like probably what most gyms are familiar with. I hate calling it circuits, but I guess I'll have to like a circuit based <laughs> color tape system where you've got, you know, whatever it is, white, yellow, orange, green, blue, purple, or whatever. Um, and then we have our, our, what we call our circuit wall, which is only three circuits. So very broad, probably like a range of four to five V grades in each of those colors. And then you have your backfill, which is there's mm. nothing marked. You got to download an app and like occasionally we'll tape up a problem that people really love kind of thing. So it's a long ass bold orientation just to tell people how it works. And that's not including a fall orientation. It's not including a warm up orientation. Like that's a ton of content to talk about. And so we and just yeah, need really then... good signage. That's what we need is just like signs everywhere looking like either something Luigi mentioned last week is making the gym look like a NASCAR like vehicle, just like plastered <laughs> in, in just like reading material. But that's a fair, I, that's actually a really fair um, thing to, well, to and then look you, out for. Th then you add like a moon board or a tension board and a kilter board. And then you're like, you're, you're basically just like walking this person around the gym, just at orienting, <laughs> like getting them into a situation where they're like, okay, can I climb yet though? Yeah. Like, can I climb yet though? Yeah. <laughs> It's like I've heard a lot. it's it's basically just trying to explain a bunch of different like standards of measurement. You're like, okay, and we use Fahrenheit on this, and so you got to remember <laughs> that like 32 degrees is the melting point, and and whatever is the boiling point, and then there's Celsius, and and then over here we do it in Kelvin. <laughs> yeah, like that is that is actually really impractical when you think of just trying to like easily get people into the gym, especially if you're doing like many orientations per hour. That is draining. Um, like I, I'm a talker in the first place. So my orientation is like 15, maybe 20 minutes for real. <laughs> like I could do three orientations per hour. Why would you pay me to do that job? Like that's not good, man. <laughs> Hopefully my people paying my checks don't watch this, but like that's, no, that, just... that is a really fair point. And, um, like signage is the obvious, like that's the thing that every gym goes to is just like write a giant paragraph, stick it on corrugated board. And yeah, but it. how many people actually re like, I don't know. It's it, like at I think a certain some people point. do shitty signage, but I think I think you can make it compelling because it's not that like especially some of the things are harder to explain. Some of them aren't so much. It's just like this is a climbing wall. You don't know how hard the climbs are. Good luck. <laughs> but that's pretty much all you have to write on the sign for this one. <laughs> Good luck with it. <laughs> oh, that's a, that might yeah, be well, that might be a particular Joe Rockhead's level of like snarkiness. The way that sign is written, maybe not everybody writes it that way. Uh, I, I don't know, man. Like, it's just it. It is a question of like, are you like over uh, saturating um, what you offer? Like, maybe, maybe like we. A lot of the GTA gyms started doing s circuits because like competitive teams are a thing in the, in the GTA. And like, if if like if I'm a coach and I want to like run an athlete through 
like a competitive circuit where they do like a full five on five off. There's, there's so many gyms that I get to choose from because they're, they're, I could literally do that with one of my athletes seven days a week. So I don't know. Like, I, is there room for it? Is there room for a grade less climbing? Is well, that... let me, let me, okay, let's, this is, this is going so much longer than it was supposed to, but fuck it, whatever. Like <laughs> if you, if you don't want to watch anymore, you can just turn it off. It's not, you know, <laughs> it's not my problem. Um, who, do, who do you think like, okay, let's say you have a gym with two types of climbing. You have your typical bouldering organized by tape colors, and then you have a circuit wall where it's like sets of five problems organized in like a competition style. Which of those two products do you think would make more sense switching to gradeless climbing? Because part of me is like, oh, that has a ton of benefits for the competitive circuit, mm -hmm. like, right? That was As aside my... from like, if you're trying to run somebody through a five on five off, you would have to pick the problems because if there's like 15 problems on the wall of three different circuits, you would want to cut it down somehow. Um, but if, if like straight up, if you just want to give them like no idea of how hard stuff is, that definitely removes that psychological barrier. So do you think it, which one would you prefer like right away? If you, if you set the same problems, but just had to remove the tape, which one do you think would, uh, would be a bigger benefit? I think I want to play it safe and, and do the comp circuit because like, I don't, like your regular clientele aren't coming in and, and, and really focused on their, the comp circuit. Like I, this is one of my personal feelings, but like walking on a volume for a new climber is really, really hard. Like they, it's it's a technical aspect out of our sport that is difficult when you start rock climbing because like you don't have footwork and everybody focuses on their hands and doing this and like so I I would want to say that like it'd be easier to do gradeless climbing in a comp circuit and I think there'd be way less complaints because that's the other thing is like there's always going to be complaints it's just like whether or not the positives outweigh the negatives right. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I would, I would not, yeah, I would play it safe and do the comp circuit. Yeah. I'm not sure. Cause I, I think it like, you know, as I'm sure it is for you guys, like we have those people that come into the gym once a week just to climb those comp circuits because they get set every week and, and they're easily organized. So like, you know, some people will come in and like, yeah, I'm going to just going to do five on five off on the pink circuit and their partner's going to do five on five off on the purple circuit, whatever, like they know is kind of their approximate range. That experience becomes immediately way harder for that climber because you just suddenly have like 15 problems and you kind of have to use your own judgment as to what to climb which means you have to spend more time looking at it so it's not as much of an on-site and you might get it wrong but at the same time like if the idea of comp climbing is just climbing whatever's in front of you maybe it's a virtue to say okay pick the five climbs that you think look best and then fucking have at it and if they're too hard then fuck you and if they're too easy then they were just a warm-up well, and do it again i don't know yeah well and that like what you're describing is a comp anyways like yeah. you don't you don't turn around from your chair and be like okay so this is the v10 all right i'm gonna have to be good at this one like the, that doesn't yeah. exist <laughs> yeah like, you get a set of boulders that so I, I think actually it's very safe to do the uh competitive circuit as gradeless i think it's much harder to do it when you're um, looking at your regular clientele and especially like the clientele that you're trying to introduce into rock climbing and introduce into like being climbers forever. Like that seems really difficult. Uh, but then we just talked to two gym owners that said that, that that's not a, a risk for them. So <laughs> what do I know? <laughs> we're, like, we're all just guessing at this game. Yeah. I'm going to have to like dig deeper and try and find uh, like the, the people we spoke to are just like geographically close. Um, Marco it was the entire reason I wanted to record this. So I had to get him on the call because his experience is relevant to where we are. Um, and then Tony, because his experience was very relevant to Marco, but also he's a well-known name. And, uh, and I think somebody that people like right off the bat when they see the name Tony Reynaldo. I don't think we mentioned it at all in the episode, but of course he's a master hold shaper with like decades of experience. And he's like a, a professor of design. I don't know if he still does that, but he's like a university professor. Um, so he's got like some relevant experience in how people interact with things. Um, but I'm sure there's some other gyms out there, maybe some that that uh, are active in, in markets that have competitors that aren't doing the same kind of thing. So I might have to look into that, but... Um, yeah. Well, so, so that 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 to me is where it gets interesting because if there's a gym that is just doing gradeless and then there's a gym directly competing with them that is doing grades, what does that interaction look like? I, like, 
what does well what i'm does buying a memory? punch pass at whatever gym it is that like throws up a grade list wall or like if so long as there's like enough climbs yeah i'll i'll buy a punch pass like i don't currently i might have like one punch still left at boulders and i probably have a couple from volunteering at a few gyms but i haven't purchased passes to to any gyms in a long time um i would absolutely do it again if there was something that different in the neighborhood so that's that's something it, they can gain right there is just me coming to hang out i guess if you give a shit it's, it's really interesting I, I just feel like the interaction between those gyms is just going to be so interesting i i want to find out if there's there's got to be someone that's doing this yeah i think, like i just want somebody in toronto to do it let's go yeah it's not I hard feel like, it's not difficult you just do it you just make it happen yeah. if it doesn't work out you stop like well, there's nobody's like, hey, your gym is going to be at a capacity of like 20 people for the next like year anyway. So who gives a shit? Good point too. And that's it's only going to be like your members and the most hardcore folks that are coming in. You're not going to be having birthday groups or whatever. So now's the time. Let's go chop chop. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. <laughs> you're bringing valid points to the table. And you're like, the only root setter in this conversation. So I, I, <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's up to you. I can't, I can suggest it at my place, but <laughs> maybe you get a, it takes it takes a while for anything I say to be accepted if it ever does, but yeah. Yeah, dude. Maybe you get a text from me later this week, being like, "So I'm setting without grades. This is a shit show." Oh, I thought you were gonna be like, "So <laughs> I'm uh, I'm fired now," and uh, it just, <laughs> this didn't work out. It just goes yeah. it goes like hard pendulum yeah. swings to the extreme. Yeah, cool. Exactly. All right. Well, we're we're <laughs> basically at the end of this uh, conversation, but yeah, thanks for sticking around and chatting about it. Because, uh, oh, but like oh. at the end of it, it's something that you you would be psyched about, right? Like, if only because it's different. It's just a new energy. I think it, I I think that I, I'd be really excited about it because of like one the conversations that the members have versus the conversations that we as setters have when we're even when we're prepping. Like, if you take grades out of that, I think then that conversation becomes more interesting because then you're talking about like the quality of the boulder or um, the audience of the boulder and less about like this boulder has to be V6 because we need another V6 in in the gym because last week we screwed up and there wasn't a V6 and now all the V6 climbers are mad that they don't have anything new. Like that is an entire conversation that wouldn't have to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. It, it'd be interesting. I'm psyched on the idea of grade. Like I said, I'm biased a little bit because like, I love, uh, I love my experience of growing up with gradeless climbing. But it, again, I also grew up in a gym with like nine backfills. So I was never bored. Mm -hmm. Well, I started climbing having like, you know, it was the first gen iPhone and I had just started climbing and all the climbs were labeled with like the V number. And in my phone, I wrote down every single V zero and every single V one. And I would like walk into the gym and I'd be like, okay, I haven't done this V zero and I haven't done this V one. So I come from the other end of the spectrum, but I am mm -hmm. also psyched about it just as, as a change. So yeah, let's, yeah. uh, let's bother some people about it and maybe, uh, <laughs> this maybe, will be fun. Maybe do something cool in Toronto. Okay. We'll cut it off there. Dustin, thanks so much for, spending your entire morning <laughs> chatting i'm gonna go back to bed thanks now. for having me okay you have fun all yeah. right see you later dustin take care bye peace